Are you ready to listen to a podcast? podcast? Here comes the Playhouse Podcast. Thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Find, subscribe, and listen. Listen, it's great when people's hearts are in the right place. But when you're trying to pay it forward and then your card keeps getting declined, oh, that's no. a look. I hey, know. can I pay for the card behind me? Sure. $375. Huh, there you go. It's getting declined. Let me try one more time. What'd you say? This, this one's getting declined. Do you have another one? Oh. Um. Ooh. Oh, no. Try one more time. Okay. Let me see one more time. Yeah, this is not working. Oh, shoot. All right. Well. All right. Y'all are good. All right. Yeah. Wait, Kat. <laughs> did you listen to the sound of this man's voice? No. What did he sound? Who does he sound like? He sounds like New York. He the guy that calls like our York. show all the time. New York, is this you? Man, can I pay for the car behind me? Oh my God, that sounds just like New York. There's more than one person that sounds like that. Man, can I pay for the car behind me? Oh, is that happening right here in town? Or New York. I don't know, but that's like, I'd say up there with one of the worst feelings. Losing uh, you'd a have, child you'd have to in, just drive away. in like Target, that's a horrible feeling, but having your card declined when people are like right there is the worst. It has been a crazy, just off the rails morning. Now, uh, a couple of seconds ago, you heard us talking about this guy who's wanting to do the right thing. He wants to pay it forward over and over again, but his credit card keeps getting declined. Hey, can I pay for the card behind me? Sure. $375. Huh, there you go. It's getting declined. Try one more time. What'd you say? So it, when we heard it, I couldn't even hear the context of it because this voice sounded so familiar to me. Man, can I pay for the car behind me? And then when I told Kat, this is the guy, the, we got a guy that calls our show all the time named New York. And he's a character and we enjoy when he calls. He always has something insightful to say, but with the passion that a New Yorker would say it, you know? Look at line two here. Good morning. Like the song says, New York is in the house. New York? <laughs> no, hey, was that you that we just played the audio from? That guy that was trying to t- pay it forward and his credit card kept getting declined? It Did sounded he, just like you. He sounded just like you. I know. I was just, I just got in the car warming up and I heard that. And I was like, wow, it does sound like me. But no, <laughs> that wasn't me because... My cards never decline. <laughs> <laughs> you and like I've done that right several there. times. Hey. I've done that several times of paying forward and stuff like helping out people because I struggle too, you know. So, yeah. so I'm always trying to give back. And I've done that several times, but that was funny. It was like listening to myself, but not. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> really? Right. That makes all the sense <laughs> in the world. I was telling Kat, I feel like. Every day when I go to the gym, it's a scene from entrapment. So when you said that the other day, I was starting to think like, well, that's your problem. Sounds like a you problem because you shouldn't have to abide by certain ways to dress when you go to work out. You know, I'm not even about that. Here's the deal. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but all over TikTok and Instagram are these amazingly good looking women who wear little to nothing to the gym. And then they set up a phone as they're doing pelvic hip thrusts with booty shorts on to videotape guys watching them, and then they expose them on the internet. That's not right. No. Because I would look at a smoke show male if he were working out, and he was doing one. What is this called? Like a lat pull down. Are these biceps right here? Oh, yeah. So this thing, yeah. and I would watch his back, you know, like, that's hot. Now, some people are there, right, because they see somebody who's achieved fitness, and they're admiring it. Yeah. It doesn't make you a pervert. But every day I go to the gym and there's somebody with a sports bra on or booty shorts on. And I'm telling you, I have hood up, eyes down. I'm not going to get roasted on the Internet that way. And it's just human nature to look around yeah. when you're in between exercises. But if I gaze across the gym and there's a good-looking girl, I look the other way immediately. You're not going down like that? No, man. I feel bad that guys have to watch out for this. If you're not being a creep and you're not saying weird things and you're not following this person everywhere they go, they shouldn't put you on blast like that. Be a a single guy. It used to be a thing to go to the gym, see a really, really good-looking person, maybe ask them if they'd like to date you. I could not even imagine trying something like that right now. So even though it falls under the category of a club, it's a health club. It's not a dance club. You still have to have some decorum. But this guy had posted this morning, if you're a woman and you don't want men to notice you at the gym, maybe wear more than just your underwear. This woman responds. Or men could just gouge their eyes out as Jesus recommended. (laughs) But 
It's a catch Neither 22, of those man. Need to be what it is a happens. catch. Tw- now, listen. If there's a guy and he's making advances on you and you've made it very clear you want nothing to do with him and he doesn't stop, get it. Put him on the internet, you yeah. know, uh, shame him, do whatever you got to do. But the one the last one I saw was this girl and she sets up the camera and she goes, she goes, "Watch, this guy's going to stare at me while I'm doing this." And she's got a she's got little to nothing on doing pelvic hip thrusts yeah. into the air. And this guy just gradually just kind of looks at her. It's like they're the only two in the gym. And he just kind of, he probably hears her grunting and he just looks to see what she's doing. And then he looks away. And then what she did is she posted it and the internet was really kind of divided. There are a lot of people going, this guy's not a pervert. He just looked around. Yeah. You know, but. Don't ugh. embarrass yourself, ladies. Go and work out. And if you have a killer body that you really worked hard on, Work out in whatever you want to work out in. But I'm don't put you, people on blast. I, I, I don't just, agree with I, that. I, I want to be antisocial because I don't want somebody to think that I'm staring at them. And again, there's nothing wrong to look at somebody who's achieving a fitness goal. But if they're going to shame you on the Internet. My wife and I had just gotten done at the gym Saturday morning. My daughter needs a ride back to school. Take her back to school. Stinky, sweaty. Like, I look pretty nasty. Sure. I can't even imagine the funk that was coming off of me at this point either. Good good workout. And, and my best workouts are when there's no time constraints, right? Mm-hmm. I had nothing to get to Saturday, so took my time. Great workout. Stinky, and you know, like after about an hour, the smell is on you. Mm-hmm. So I walk into the grocery store. All I was supposed to do is get two blocks of cream cheese. Ooh, what's she my making? Wife, she made chicken chili in the crock pot. Oh, sweet. And it was off the chisel. It okay. was really good. So Here's where it gets super interesting. You tell me whether or not I'm making too much out of this. Yes. <laughs> Knowing you, yes. What did we say and what did we hear from dozens of people is the calling card for a swinger at the grocery store? Pineapple. Pineapple where? In the cart where the baby sits. Okay. So here's where I'm not overthinking this. I take a hard right into the cream cheese dairy area. And this woman is standing right there Uh with a cart and a pineapple where the baby's supposed to be. And I say, because she's right in front of the cream cheese. I said, excuse me real quick. And she looked at me. She's like, my pleasure. She looks down and she moves the pineapple from one side to the next. No way. Swear to God. Someone hit on you? I, I know. What? I think. I don't know. Listen. Not everybody is hip to that pineapple thing or the sex or knows about that stuff. They don't. Maybe she was getting pineapple. She gave me a once over. She moved the pineapple. I think it was a clear calling card to I'm down if you're down. Well, now, you described what you look like. Do you think she thought you were a straight person? Well, she was just being nice <laughs> to you? I did. I had, a, I had my hood up. I had a, a, like a sweatband yeah. on. I had uh, shorts on. I mean, I was like, I, like I, I, I looked, I looked <laughs> like I just got done working out. But here's my theory. Even though I'm old, fat, and stupid, yeah. after a good workout, my pheromones were just bursting out of my body. Really? The smell of a man overcame her at the moment, and she decided, I don't care how ugly he is, he smells like a breeder, and she moved the pineapple from one side to the next. So you're picturing like a Pepe Le Pew thing yeah. where it wafts under her nose. You can see the wiggly lines. It goes right under her nose. She's like, that's now, mine. That's I understand to 99.7% of the female population, this, there's nothing there for you. There maybe one day was, but that guy's long gone. He's broken, and he's, he's probably tired. never coming back. <laughs> but... Do you think that at that moment, the stars all aligned and that woman said, yeah, he'll do. Then where did it go? I got scared and left. I grabbed my two blocks of cream cheese. I got the hell out of there. I I really didn't even fully process it till I was on the way home. Then I'm like, do I have to tell my wife about this? (laughs) Can I just let myself feel good about this? Or do I have to tell Trish that I think a swinger? wanted to get at this. I don't think you should embarrass yourself and tell her. I think you should just Just tell the audience. Just tell a couple hundred thousand people about it. But I just, it never happens. I'm way past that level. I'm very happy for you. I think that that's exciting. I don't know if it's truly how 
it was supposed to go down, but I'm excited that you had those thoughts. In a life full of amazing disappointments, I got one little win on Saturday. This is great. And I thought it was worth talking about because, because of the pineapple. Now, yeah. I would she I would have never thought twice about it, but she deliberately just stood there, said my pleasure, and moved the pineapple. Mm-hmm. Lee was like, you know what the pineapple means. And if I think back to it right now, I'm pretty sure she was up on this. She wanted some. She wanted some of that. Who would blame her? How's Deb doing this morning? Deb is doing okay. How's JJ doing? Great, Kat. thank you. Well, Kat, Hi. Oh, yeah, thank you. Just the afterthought it's always. My show. Uh, oh. So here's the deal, Deb. One question, you get one quick answer, and it has to do with your car today. So 21% of drivers have no idea how to do this in their car. What is it, Deb? Check oil. Mm. No, good guess. Not right. I'll give you a hint as we go on to Candace. Uh, Candace, we know it's not check your oil. I would say it has nothing to do with really uh, the mechanics of your car, but 21% of drivers can't do this. They don't know how to do this in their car. What is it? I would say clean it. Mm. I think most people know how to clean their car, but that's a actually that's a horrible guess, Candace. Yeah. I have to let you go. You can't be on the show anymore. Nothing to do with mechanics nothing, at all. Nothing to do mechanical. Marcus, how's it feeling today? Hey, not too bad. Say, hey, I'm gonna take a guess and say turn on like a froster or something like that. Mm. I would say you have, you have the well, not really. It has to do with. And I'm talking mechanical, like change your oil, change your you know, clean your carburetor, stuff okay. like that. You're the closest though so far, Marcus. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Thanks for being on the show. Hey, Megan, uh, Megan, Megan, you're going to get our final guest today. 21% of drivers have no idea how to use this in their car. What do you think it is? Uh, probably the, uh, uh, I don't know, change the windshield wipers. Mm, no, not right either. I'm sorry. Hope you have a good morning, though. Good guess. I was going to say they don't know how to put on their cruise control. That's exactly it. Isn't it? So I'm a cruise control person. and I use cruise control in town. Yeah, I'll even go from one light to the next, and I'm like, oh, I'm so lazy. When I use it the most, to be honest, is on my way into work. Yeah. Because there's not a lot of cars on the road when we come in at between three and, and four. And I'm afraid that in town without a lot of cars around, I'll end up doing like 45, 50 down the 30 mile an hour streets. Yeah. So I hit 30. I just tap it at 31 or 32 just to make sure that, it, I mean, because without anyone around, it's hard to govern yourself. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, tw- one in five of us don't know how to use the cruise control. Isn't that crazy? That's a little weird. Oh, and by the remember when you were, well, see, and you don't have a kid that's driving it, but all three of my kids. Were because one of the hardest things to do when you start driving is your speed control, right? Yeah. You're either too fast, and the mom's like, oh, you're too fast. It's a 30 in here, right? Uh-huh. And so my kids use speed, uh, the cruise control all the time. Yeah. It's the, I think it's one of the first things they learn when they start driving because then they get a chance to, they, they can pay attention better to looking over their shoulder, finding out, you know, Checking wh- their text messages. where they're going and stuff like that. So the other day, do you remember when you mentioned that radio people just – we're conditioned to just take anything that's free because you never know when things are going to go away. Do you know how many beef jerky bags I took off the counter today? Oh, I saw them laying in there. Yeah. I took six. Are they, are they expired? Why no, are they uh-uh. in there? They're just left over. They're from very something? salty. So I think just one you piece took a day. took six bags of beef jerky because they did. were free. <laughs> and then I took a thing of volumized mousse and I don't even put mousse in my hair, but I felt like I had to take it. You were in the back of my mind saying, do you need that? Do you need that? And in my head, I was like, I don't. But maybe Liam might someday want to crunch up his curls. So I took it. You don't use it. Your kid doesn't use it. Your husband's bald. But you took it anyways, just so nobody else could have it. So That's, could that, have we're it. conditioned to do that. What I'm telling you. What's wrong with me? I once gave away expired calendars on the air because I took a stack of them. Yeah. And I wanted to see if people would actually, it, people want, if it's free, they don't care if they need it. They'll just Did you at least it. do your math and tell them when they would be able I to said use these it again? Avail- yep. If you save these for 72 <laughs> years, they will be available to use again. Radio paparazzi. Adele speaking to the audience. She likes to be really interactive. So when she sings, she'll walk around 
the venue where she's performing. I think that's really cool. She'll come off stage into the audience and she started doing a Q&A with some of her fans and she asked if they were going to watch or go to the Super Bowl. Yes, I'm going just for Rihanna. I don't give a flying Going for Rihanna, I can go. give a blank about football. Yeah, that's kind of like uh, me. I'm going for the halftime show. We're going to have some goodies to eat, and that'll be that. All right, Sasha Walpole is her name. Everybody has been wondering who took Prince Harry's V-card. Who is this stable girl who was much older than him that found herself in a field with him? I've kept this a secret for 21 years. I would never have said anything if he hadn't have put it in his book. We were drunk and having sex in a field. I didn't know Harry was a virgin at the time. You know, it was just a, a quickie in the field. <laughs> Harry wrote in his book that I gave him a slap on the bum. I'm surprised <laughs> Harry put it in his book. It was such a long time ago. We were teenagers. It just doesn't really seem a big deal to me because I've known for so long. Just like, Why reminds me of that Step Brothers that scene where she smacks him in the butt and oh. she's like, there you go, pony boy. Stay golden yeah, pony stay boy. Golden <laughs> pony. <laughs> but like, that that's a cool chick. She has kept that secret for a long time. You think that there was an NDA or something. I guarantee, I guarantee she was paid money not to talk about it a long time ago. If she wasn't, that's pretty cool that she just like, well, I did what I did and, and that's that. So um, I just want you to know, as Valentine's approaches and you still, maybe you don't have somebody to spend it with, just know that there is hope. <laughs> You might be familiar with Tiger King, a.k.a. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. Joe Exotic. The world calls me Joe Exotic. (laughs) All right, there's someone out there for everybody because Joe Exotic is engaged again. He is now with a guy named Seth Posey. Met him on the internet, which I didn't realize, like, in prison, maybe somebody that's been to prison can call us and let us know how much internet access do you have. I feel like you could probably, like, research how to win a case. I don't think you can just win a case. Like you, I don't think you can just. Or get I mean, you can the law. research a little bit more about how you can get Appeal out of your prison. Spot. Yeah, yeah, I agree with all that. But like, I didn't know you had access to dating yeah. websites and stuff like that. That's a little you can weird. Grinder in prison. That's weird, right? Like, I feel like that's too much access to the outside world. Why would you ever want to leave if you were going to be homeless? Well, probably to be with without that a job. Person. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unless they're just putting money on your books and you're living the good life. But I guess he's revised as well, leaving everything to Seth. We don't know what everything is. I don't think might this guy's have... got anything left. Remember, he's never going to recover from this financial ruin. I don't know. But, yeah, he, there's someone out there for everyone. It may not be this Valentine's Day, but you'll find somebody. Blowing out their candles today. You're, someone's getting Rick rolled. It's Rick Astley's birthday, 57. Natalie Cole would have been 73 in news. And Tom Brokaw is 83. President Biden, he was um, having to explain his decision to shoot down the Chinese spy balloon a little bit later than what people had hoped. On Wednesday, when I was briefed on the balloon, I ordered the Pentagon to shoot it down on Wednesday as soon as possible. They decided without doing damage to anyone on, on the ground. They decided that the best time to do that was when we got over water, and I want to compliment our aviators who did it, and we'll have more to report on it's uh, a little later. Thank you. Imagine you get that call. Like, you, you're you one of the finest pilots the United States has. And you get that call. Hey, we're going to need you to get airborne to take down a Chinese balloon. Yeah. There's no real threat to anything right now. But if you could get up there and shoot that down, that'd uh, be great. Can you repeat that, Foxtrot? Did you see the altitude it was at? It was like where normal planes that you ride in and then how high the jets can go. And then it was like almost out of the atmosphere. The it deal. was weird. If they want to spy on us via satellite that yeah. we don't know about, they're already doing it. Yeah. This balloon was just, it was a distraction for something. Yeah. So if you're one of those people that was like, oh, why didn't you shoot it down over Montana? It's like there are schools, there are people. Cows. So they had cows. We don't want to lose any cows, especially in 2023. So that is why he did it. Are you ready to party? Spring break starts next weekend for many colleges. So get ready for it. Senior Frogs will be taking over. I don't even know if that's a cool place to go anymore, but it's a little sh- a little shady, I think. But it's always has been. Yeah, I think that was the allure. But the average cost of a spring break vacation this year is about fifteen hundred to two thousand. They're going to Punta Cana, the DR, Montego Bay was another one in Jamaica, oh, right and then Puerto Vallarta. So we're safe from all of these hooligans.
on our beautiful resort in Kankun. I don't Kankun. think they can afford the resort we go I don't to. think they I can. I remember either. being in college and I couldn't afford yeah. it. Uh, lawmakers in Tennessee, they have introduced a new bill to replace Columbus Day with Super Bowl Monday. Let's see if they can make it happen. Most of the people are either hungover or they just don't want to come to work because the Super Bowl runs way into late hours. It almost seems like a backdoor way to cancel a real holiday. Okay, so can we <laughs> all... just take Monday off. Use your vacation. So many people don't use their vacation. Use it. Plan for it. It's the same day. Every single year they will announce what day it's going to be. And then I'm all, take it I'm all for this, by the way. I don't mind it. Again, Columbus Day, if you look deep into it, this is a man that created genocide. You know what I mean? Right. Like, we're still having this on the calendar. Take the day after Super Bowl off. You know what? Make it a national holiday. And uh, I'm into that. What is the smell of your city? Now, uh, every year I get invited to play in a golf scramble in Albany. And it's always, uh, everybody knows where that, that golf course is right along the freeway there. And the wind shifts, and it's usually like uh, I'll get picked up by my friend Darren, and then we go out there, and it's a hell of a lot of fun. But when you're about through your third beer, you know, it's the ninth or tenth hole, the wind shifts, and the yeah. smell of the powdered craft macaroni and cheese sauce hits you right in the gag reflex. Who would think that it would smell so bad? But I wonder if it smells that bad inside the building. If it does, I don't know how people can tolerate working there unless it's just coming out through a, a I, smoke stack. That's or my something. thought. My thought is that it's the exhaust, right? And it's you probably can't have people working. It's there. not a pollutant, I yeah. would think, but the smell, and I'm sure it's one of those, oh, we live in Albany, we're used to it. Uh-huh. But that's got to be the smell. Yeah. Oh, I wonder Albany. if this is our texter. Is this Brianna? I, uh, I don't think so. Okay. So my question is. What's the smell of your city, cat? So I'm going to have to say, I guess the only notable one is the turkey manure that I was talking about the other day. And it happens just in a span of one week when they lay it and they get ready to grow their crops and stuff. But it is the worst smell. And then if you have your air conditioning on, because they always spread it on like the hottest day. And then if your AC is on, it sucks it from the outside. And then the inside of your house, uh, it's bad. And turkey manure boring. is a little bit more pungent than regular cow manure. But I have very, very clean, crisp air, it feels like. When we go for walks, I, I live out in like a cornfield, so it smells good. I hey, like good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Good, man. Where do you live? Uh, Browerville. What's the smell of Browerville? If you could just kind of put it in terms for us. All right. So the... Sister town next to us has a slaughterhouse, Long Prairie Packing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they sh- they ship all their waste to the facility Central 5 right between our two towns. Ugh. And it, it, it oh, the whole area smells like death. So has this <laughs> been a topic of conversation at, like, a chamber meeting or anything? Like, how oh, can probably for something 30 be years. done about it? How come nothing's being uh, done? I'm sure... Uh, I'm pretty sure it has. So, could you describe it's, it's, this smell to to somebody who's never smelled it? What? Uh, give me a description. What does it smell mostly like? I mean, death is tough to describe. Um, a dead cow, a, a farm with a bunch of dead animals. Yeah, like okay. de- decomposition. Yes. Yeah. Yep. That's rough stuff. I yeah, wonder they, why they wouldn't just put it in the middle of a field miles out. Well, because you got to process it the right way. Otherwise, right. it becomes a biohazard. No, I know. The the building oh, where they do I, it. Yeah, I don't know. You would th- out because I think, uh, I think that w- when you have a building like this, there are codes that you have to follow for your exhaust, right? Yeah. And I'm sure they do the bare minimum right. cause, because if you go way over the top to, you know, completely alleviate that, that's probably millions and millions of dollars worth another filtrate system that you don't have to spend. I and can't even in- imagine on a hot day. Like when True you go story. to Schweder Chevrolet, oh, I don't know how those people work there. <laughs> the Golden Plum Factory, I mean, I feel for those people I, that I, have to work there. Oh, I go past stinky. it all the time and I always ask my mom, I go, did you fart? Because <laughs> like, it smells like that. She's like, it's the plant. It's the plant. I go, I don't I'm know. A lady. That's, that smells like a Trisha. <laughs> Real nice. If you, if you live really if you live really close to that place in 90 degree weather, you do not want to turn your air conditioner on. 
<laughs> and yeah, then, and that's then you got to get a car that's got, now, I don't know how about your, your vehicle, but mine has the, can you choose to use the recycled air from the inside or can uh-huh. you suck in new fresh air? You got to always yep. have the, the uh, recycled yep. air going, right? And you got to sell your house in the winter right. because you got to you gotta dupe them Good into call. a lemon because you can't sell that house on a hot day. Tough gig, man. The Playhouse podcast is made possible thanks to Bradshaw and Brian Law Offices. Catch the live show weekdays from 530 to 9 on 1047 KCLD. Now, share this with a friend.